So we were able to compare two values. Now it's time to compare three values. So let's say we have int x equal to 8, int y equal to 7, and int, let's say z, is equal to, let's say, 5 or 6, let's say. And I want to print the greatest of these three. Now, do you what do you think? What could be the solution here? See, one thing we can do is we can compare all the values, but at one point you can compare only two values, right? Example, we can say x is greater than y. We can't simply say x is greater than x, uh, y, and j. Okay, that will be invite syntax. Let me just show you that. If I try to compile this code, you can see we got the error. So what could be the solution? Of course, we can't do this, but we can do one more thing here. Can we say, when, when we are saying, let's compare for x. So at one point you can compare if x is greater than y and j both. And we have done that, right? So in one if condition, we can say x is greater than y and x is greater than z, okay? But then don't you think these are two different conditions? And if you want to combine them, and I want both them to be true, in this case, we can use AND, and we have seen this, right? So basically, we are doing an AND operation here for this condition and this condition. So if this returns true and this returns true, it will execute X. In fact, you know, just to simplify this, I just have put the curly brackets in the last video. Let me just remove that, just to keep it simple. And now you can see we got uh, this condition. So if this is true, it will execute x. That means x is greatest. That makes sense, right? But what if, in fact, let me just run this code if this works properly. Uh, clear first and then compile and run. You can see we got 8 because 8 is greatest. But what if the value of z is 9? And if you compile this code now and run, it says 7. Oh, that's weird. That means the code is not complete. See, at this point, if if is false, I mean, if by any chance, if this is false, that means we now we have to go for y and z. We have to compare them. How will you do that? This was simple. How will you compare again? Because in else, we don't put a condition, right? But what if we can? So what if we can say else, and again, we can put an if. And in this if, we can say y is greater than x, and, oh, not this and, the logical and, and then y is greater than z. So basically what we're doing is, in the first case, we are checking for x if x is greatest. The second case, we are checking for y if y is greatest. At this point, let me just make y the greatest, which is 17. So of course, it, sh it should print 17. Run, you can see we got 17. But what if, okay, first of all, let's do a dry run here. So what happens is, it starts from this condition. If the value of x is greater than y, if that is true, it will check for the next one. And as you can see here itself, it is getting false. So the moment you get false here, it will not execute the if block. What it will do is, it will go next. It will say, okay, we got else here. It will execute the else block. But in else is not a simple else. It is else if. One more condition here, which is checking for y. If y is greatest, it will print y. But what if y is not greatest? It is z here. But still, if you compile this code, you will get nothing. You know why? It's because we are not printing z anywhere. So what you can do is, you can, you can do one more else here for z. So if this two are false, of course, you will execute the else block. I can just simply copy this and paste it here. You know, instead of saying copy paste, I can, I can say code reuse. That makes much more sense. And I can say Z. And now, if I can compile and run, you can see we got 9. Now, this makes sense, right? So if both these conditions are false, it will execute the else block. Okay? And that works. Now, you can just change the values in your machine. First of all, copy the code. And whenever you change the values, it will surely work. But there's one more thing. If you can think about this, when you execute this one, and if this gives you false, don't you think the x is small now compared to other two values? So in that case, when you check for y, y we have to even compare y with x. Anyway, x is smaller, right? So now we just have to compare y with z.
we are just saving one one operation one operation here and it's very important when you save one one operation you are saving time you are saving resources so try to try to be a efficient programmer not just a programmer and that's what you do you check what is required what is not required and remove all the unnecessary code and once we have done this compile the code and run you can see we got nine and you can change the values it will surely work so what we have done in this video is we have talked about if else if else and that's how it works so that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed let's see in the next video what else we can do